Hi, this is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com and today I want to talk about advanced idle speed control theory. Basically, how it works. We're going to use two systems to control idle. One of them is going to be the dynamic spark control timing to control the idle speed. That's basically your fine adjust. And then for our big adjustments, we're going to use the idle air controller or IAC. There's a few assumptions we want to make. First, that your idle speed must be stable before any IAC is added to the system. You need to see my previous video on basic idle control. The idle control will be using a combination of ignition timing adjustment and idle air controller. An idle air controller is not used to control a hunting idle. We are going to demonstrate how to find the range that your IAC is capable of controlling your motor we're also going to demonstrate how idle speed control actually works. And later I will show you the setup screens for Megasquirt MS3 systems to get all this to work. This is your basic throttle body. Over on the left would be your air filter, incoming air, and based on the angle of the throttles, air leaks around the bottom and top in this case and goes on to the motor. This is generally controlled with some sort of small adjuster screw on the outside of your throttle body to open this just a little bit to control idle speed. An idle air controller or IAC is basically a controlled air leak past the throttle bodies. This thing is typically a solenoid of some sort, possibly a stepper motor, but what happens is as the ECU opens and closes this little gate, a little more or a little less air goes around the bottom bypassing the throttle blades. This device can be all sorts of different designs from two wire, three wire, four wire, stepper motors, solenoids, all sorts of different things, but they all essentially do the same thing. They open a little bit if the idle speed is a little low and they close down if the idle speed is a little too high. I want to note that this method of idle speed using an IAC will not work on an alpha N system where all fueling is based and airflow is, is calculated from the angle of this throttle, it will know nothing about the idle air controller bleeding air past and it just will not work. The only way you can control an alpha N system is by somehow changing the throttle position at the blades. Here's a typical throttle body. The white is where the air would bypass the throttle blade based on the throttle stop and this little black area, that's the port where the idle air controller is bleeding air through the throttle body. The white gap that I was talking about on the throttle blades is typically adjusted by some sort of throttle stop. This is a fairly elaborate one, but essentially they all have what is a mechanical stop that's highlighted as the yellow arrow. In my previous video, I showed where RPM can vary based on ignition advance. And in this particular case, I can go from a zero on ignition advance all the way through about 20 degrees advance and the RPM steadily came up. Look at my previous video on simple idle control where I talk more about this. On this particular motor, what I have is a target RPM of about a thousand. So what we're gonna do is run a test and see what positions are available to us with the idle air controller to get control of the RPM. And as we change from one idle air controller to the next, this angle and also the position of this red line will change. What we are essentially testing is how our IAC controls our motor. So what I wanna do is first disconnect the IAC and set the idle to something lower than you really want as a target RPM. In this case, I'll set it to about 750. And then what we'll do, in the case of Megasquirt, we would just go up to idle, come down to idle step control, or idle step, and up comes a box, of which in the red, what I do is run that from zero for a test, up through whatever it takes to get to about 2,500 RPM. Just stepping it one step at a time. I did each step for about a second or so, and you can see as I went from zero up through about 15 or so, 20 possibly, I had almost no effect on the RPM. Then somewhere around 25 
6% duty cycle. You can see where my RPM started coming up. Up to when I got to 50% duty cycle, I was up at about 2200 RPM. Notice how we have a very consistent line going from about 26 up through 50. That's the range where the IAC, as it opens, the RPM will constantly keep coming up. That is what we would consider the usable range for your IAC on your motor. So now, what we want to do is get the base set. We found that 30 degrees is about right. So we're going to put a 30 in this box and then adjust the idle screw, whatever it takes, to get the motor up to your target RPM. That way, once you get everything set, we can back the idle air controller back a little bit, drop the RPM down, or we can add the idle air controller PWM to get a higher RPM. So now what we've done is got everything stabilized. We're at 1,000 RPM. We're in an IX setting of 30, a good steady idle. And we can set it to about, say, 33 for a hot start and possibly 40 or so for a cold start and have a good control range where we can adjust things up and down. You might find on some idle air controllers, as you get to small numbers, the RPM starts coming back up. You really can't use one like that in this range, you can only use it where the RPM continually goes up as the steps go up or the PWM go up. So now what we're looking at is the first two seconds of a cold start. You can see where the coolant's running, oh, about 80. Here it is, 78.9 right there. And you'll see where the battery drops as I touch the starter button, right at about three quarters of a second in, the RPM registers at the motor is 250 RPM cranking. You can see where I caught top dead center right here. And by the second top dead center, the motor fires, comes to life. And within two seconds, I go from touching the starter button through the motor is up to about 1650 RPM. I've now zoomed back to five seconds on the bottom from the vertical line to the vertical line. This is still where I hit the starter button and you can see where the idle RPM has stabilized in. The manifold air pressure is stabilized. Notice the AFRs are not online yet because they're not warmed up. And the battery is coming back to the 14 or so voltage that you really look for with the motor idling. As I step back to about 60 seconds total from vertical line to vertical line, the engine cycles start getting a little fuzzy. You really can't tell much anymore. But the RPM is stabilized and slowly coming down. The PWM idle duty is now down to about 33 or so, and the AFR has since come online. Also notice how steady the pulse width is through this entire range. Now I'm zoomed back to about 400 seconds total. It's 360 seconds at the vertical line, and you can see the RPM is coming down. Uh, I've got the scale set from 0 to 1750, so it's getting pretty close to about 1000 RPM. It's actually at 1,058 at this point. The idle correction advance is doing its thing from about here on out, pulling or pushing more timing into the motor to hold a steady RPM. You can see where the AFRs came online. The EGO correction started pulling fuel to get to my target AFR. And the coolant is pretty much stabilized. Again, the pulse width is very stable through here, trying to avoid a hunting idle. This is a different view of the same start. Basically what I've done is go to the scatter plot views, chosen in the bottom right corner. I'm showing coolant at the bottom on all three of these plots, going from 80 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see that I started my PWM idle duty at about 41 or so. And it slowly decays down as the motor warms up. At about 102 degrees is where the idle control started came in, and that's a setting that I'll show you at a later date. And on the right, you can see the RPM steadily decaying down as the coolant temperature came up. Let's go ahead and watch this live for a little bit. We're now at a temperature of about 115, 120 degrees. You can see that the PWM idle duty is only changing one step at a time to try to hold the target RPM, but it's your timing control that's actually fine adjusting the RPM. On the right, you can see that that RPM is jumping up and down just a little bit. 
but it's in the neighborhood of about 20 RPM. I'm zoomed in in this view from about 500 to 1500 RPM. At the end, you can see where it gets all the way down at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and it gets to real close to 1000 RPM. What we're looking at here is an example of the ECU controlling idle speed. When the motor is fully warmed up, it's running very close to the 1000 RPM target. And as I increase load, in this case, what I did was just pulled on the power steering and the load came in, dropped the RPM for about one second. The RPM dropped to 800 and then recovered. The PWM jumped up knowing that we were down in RPM. So it jumped up a little bit. And you can see the idle spark quickly jumping in, trying to pull the RPM of the motor back up. I went for about five or 10 seconds let go of the steering wheel to take the load back off the motor, but that could be your alternator load from the headlights. It could be a air conditioner cycling on and off. doesn't really matter. The RPM jumped up a little bit. Instantly, the PWM said, I'm too high. Let's pull some PWM out to get the idle back down. And you can see where the idle adjust jumped out to try to pull the RPM back to the corrected area. Notice that it comes back down to the 1,000 target where I applied load again, a little less load this time, and let go again and continue that. But you can see it within a matter of about a second, the RPM is right back to the target RPM. Here's a set of gauges I put together to analyze this. In the left side are your basic inputs to the motor, the coolant temperatures, throttle position, engine RPM, and a normal scale that you typically see. Here's my manifold air pressure. In this case, the motor's idling at 1,000 and my 27 kPa. And you can see my battery voltage is steady at about 13. In the yellow box, there's your EGO corrections. In the center is an idle speed target in the green box. And around the outside is the actual idle speed from a scale of zero up through 2,000 RPM. On the right is my idle PWM percent and my idle correction. And then the top right is just to be able to keep an eye on this is the timing and the pulse width and duty cycle. So this is where it was at a cold start. I'm just about to start the motor. It's showing about 80 degrees F in both the coolant and the intake manifold temperature. The battery voltage in this case normally would run about 12.4, 12.6 or so with the motor not running. Uh, I happen to be on a battery charger, so it's showing about 13.7 or so. 13.8. But in the bottom right corner, you can see where I've parked the PWM percent at just over 40 and the motor is ready to start. Let's go ahead and watch this do this live. So right here, you will see the battery voltage come down, motor comes to life. The PWM is still at about 40 for the first few seconds, but it's slowly decaying down to hold the RPM at my target of about 13.75 at this temperature. At about 100 seconds, you can see where the idle correction has come online. The PWM has dropped down to about 35%. I'm down to 1,050 or so RPM. You can see my EGO corrections are online. You can also see the PWM is still fairly stable. And your idle correction advance is holding the motor so that the target and the actual RPM are very close. We're now up to about 550 seconds. You can see the engine RPM is very stable now. And this is where I start pulling on the steering wheel. You can watch the RPM drop down and then stabilize up. As I let go here in a minute, there it is. The RPM jumped up. You can see the PWM and the idle advance both trying to correct. I do it a couple of more times. Just so you get an idea of how this all comes together. At this point, I'm going to open up the fuel settings, go to the VE table, and you can see how stable the idle speed is. And we're grabbing the same, pretty much the same VE number on both cells that it's oscillating in. Also, the timing is fixed at 15 degrees timing, so that it's my idle advance table that's actually holding the RPM. Here's an example trace of where I took the same motor and started it. You notice that the coolant is steady at about 175 degrees. As I hit the starter button, 
motor starts and then instantly jumps to about 1634 peak and then settles in within about a second or so to a reasonable RPM. You can also see how the idle correction jumps online because we are up to temp. It jumps online, pulls timing, trying to get the RPM down until all of a sudden it starts to oscillate, helping hold the target. You can see how the RPM is starting to stabilize. Within about 10 seconds, the idle correction is doing fairly well. EFR is running a little bit lean, and when the EGO correction came on, it instantly added fuel and stabilized my AFR. As soon as the AFR stabilized, so did my idle. Notice at the bottom I'm running about 10 milliseconds darting pulse width, but as soon as the motor starts, the pulse width settles down to about 1.8. So let's go through the key points for controlling idle speed. The first thing we're going to do is have idle control using a combination of ignition timing and idle air controller. Your idle must be stable before any IEAC is added to the system. We went through finding the IAC range of operation for your motor with your IAC. It will always be different for everybody's motor as you come up with different combinations of cam and whatever. And then I demonstrated how idle speed control works. In the next video, I'll go through the settings to how to get all this to work. I want to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These are the developers of Megalog Viewer HD that I use to tune almost all of these motors. And should you get the desire to help me stay motivated to make more videos, you can always hit paypal.me slash how EFI works. Thank you for watching.